In today's episode, I will share five teachings from the Pleiadians on the theme of sexuality. Hello, beautiful soul. Welcome to my YouTube channel or my podcast. I'm your host and guide, Will Caminada, and I'm here to help you awaken, heal, and expand your consciousness. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel or to my podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcast, and follow me on Instagram at GeeWill, where I post exclusive daily content. Two things before I get into today's topic. If you have no idea who the Pleiadians are, please watch this video first or listen to episode 49. Second, the information that I'm going to share here is taken from the book Bringers of the Dawn, Teachings from the Pleiadians by and through Barbara Marciniak. She channeled this material from the Pleiadians. So just a little disclaimer here that I'm sharing my own interpretation of it and if you feel called to read it, you can find a link to purchase the book below. Number one sexuality connects us to our divine essence the peas say that when our original 12 strand dna was split into two strands we were left with very little data in memory but sexuality was left intact in the physical body obviously for reproduction reasons but also as a way for us to stay in touch with our very essence and bring this essence into life. They say the orgasm is a high vibrational frequency that connects us with the frequency of ecstasy, which connects us back to our divine source and to information. In this book, the peas always refer to light as information, by the way. But they say the orgasm has been distorted from the original purpose because society has taught us for thousands and thousands of years that sexuality is bad and why you may ask to keep us controlled and keep us from seeking the freedom available through sexuality so it is necessary for us to clear this negativity surrounding sexuality from this lifetime as well as to experience and examine how we utilize sexual energy or sexual expression in our multidimensional selves Number two, sexuality invokes a spirituality that is free and that looks at itself as a creator. The sexual parts of our physical body are avenues to pleasure that create frequencies that can heal and stimulate the body and potentially lead it to a connection to our higher spiritual body. So when you look at our dimensionality, this basically means we are not just physical beings. We have subtle bodies such as our emotional and mental bodies and then on top of that the causal body or the spiritual body so when we are able to approach sex as sacred and have a deeper connection with the other person we are able to merge the physical the emotional the mental into one ecstatic moment of connection with the higher selves. Number three, your sexual history is helping you gather data and understand your selves. They are obviously very non-judgmental about everything. At some point in the book, they say, sometimes hot sex feels great and is wonderful, <laughs> but they want us to know that there is much more. But the thing that may be keeping us from exploring more are the beliefs and fears around sex. Many of the fears, which by the way, many times can be subconscious, they are based on what we created for ourselves and what we've done to others in our sexual life. The P's say our sexual history affects every portion of our soul. And we may not want to look at this because it can be too painful and also because we judge it because we think it's bad. We store a lot of trauma in our bodies regardless of whether they had to do with sexuality or not. And so it can be hard to have a sacred sexual experience if we don't free ourselves from those stored traumas. But they ask us not to judge it and to understand that sexuality is a frequency. So we have the ability to heal through sexual energy and connect with the very essence of our being. 
Number four, the church's impact on our consciousness in relation to sex. The P's warn they're going to do some church bashing and they apologize in advance for anyone who's a member of the churches. They're funny, so don't take it personally, don't take it seriously. But essentially all they're saying is that churches have become organizations, businesses to control religion and spiritual development amongst other things. As I said earlier, they refer to light as information. And one thing that most religions don't do is keep us informed, right? It's more like they want to give us a book of rules rather than encourage us to question things. Because sexuality was an opportunity for us to regain our memory or to connect with our spiritual selves and spiritual creator, or to find an avenue to the spiritual realm that we've been sealed off from, the churches came around and promoted sexuality for procreation only. Women were told that sexuality was something that they had to undergo to serve men and that they had no control over the birthing process. I know I may be throwing some controversial topics here and we are all entitled to have our opinions about things, but I do think it's important to bring up these conversations because as much as we may think that we are evolving and I believe we are, first, there are still many people thinking that they have no generational role in the, in the impact this has had on women. So it's also about taking responsibility. And second, a lot of these things are embedded in our consciousness because we've been living under these rules for thousands and thousands of years and it's been passed on from generation to generation so we need to start or keep healing for ourselves and for the collective otherwise the evolution in our consciousness will be slow Another topic that they also bring up is that the discovery of the highest frequency of sexuality arises from the love experience and it has nothing to do with sexual orientation. It has to do with two human beings bringing pleasure to one another in a way that opens frequencies of consciousness. Love is love. Go play aliens. <laughs> Number five, the sexual experience is an electromagnetic exchange. When we join bodies, even when we hug one another, we exchange frequency. When we have a sexual experience, there is a hormonal release inside the body. The hormones awaken certain energies inside the cells and there is a transference of one person's essence onto the other person. That's why sometimes after the sexual experience you can't get the, their energy off you because you've had an electromagnetic exchange. And so the more you become aware of energy in general, the more you make choices according to that. It can be that you may go through periods of dormancy in sexual activities and this can be a good period in your life for you to develop intimacy with yourself and explore sexual energy by practicing what the piece call the art of masturbation. The play aliens are very open-minded and cool, right? I wish they were my teachers in my school when I was a teenager. <laughs> and they also suggest that you can just practice observing that you feel a sexual arousal and then you decide what you're going to do with this energy. You can let it rise through your body or even just visualize what you want to create as sexual energy is also the energy of creativity. And you can work your way up from the sacral chakra through the feeling centers, the solar plexus, the heart, and then up to the crown chakra for that spiritual connection. It's almost like masturbation meets meditation. And so they encourage us to not be afraid to be intimate with ourselves, to not be afraid of being alone with the self, because once we develop an intimacy, a silence, a self-love, a containment of our energy, then we will want to make that aspect of our intimacy our standard for intimacy with someone else. These are the five messages that the Pleiadians have for us about sexuality. And I want to wrap this episode with a quote from the book, The Bringers of the Dawn. On this planet, sexuality has always been 
the body's link to its higher frequency. Even though much of the data was scattered and disassembled in the body, this potential to create life remained for you to completely understand who you are at the base of your being and at the core of who you are. Sexual vibration has been your link with your cosmic identity, but this whole concept has been completely misunderstood and lost. We are saying that there is a bigger story and that it is much more exciting than anyone has ever dared to believe. So let me know in the comments what has been your biggest takeaway from these teachings. Did you have any realization or new insights as to how you approach sexuality in your life? And if you're looking to heal and release any negativity and trauma around sexuality, breath work can help you. Check the link in the description to learn how you can access my full library of classes and how you can work one-on-one -on -one with me. Also, if you think one of your friends may enjoy or benefit from the content in this episode, please share it with them. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at GeeWill and I'm also on the app Insight Timer. You can find me under my name, Will Caminada. As always, keep shining your light, keep your heart open and let love lead the way. I love you. See you in the next episode.